Expo, the recommended React Native framework, now supports React server components. You can send components from the server right to your React Native application. It is revolutionary stuff. Let's check it out right now. All right, this is the initial starter state of our images using RSC application. This is going to allow us to upload images to it and see those images and interact with them. It's pretty basic stuff, but it will show us all what we need to know about React server components in this environment and how to use them. All right, so the first thing I need to do is add the ability to select an image. So I'm gonna go over here to our app directory and then within that index.tsx. And here we can see our route, including that hello. Let's get rid of the hello. Now I'm gonna add a custom hook and that custom hook is gonna allow us to select an image. So the most important thing we're gonna bring in is the Expo image picker. That's gonna allow us to pick an image on the mobile device. And then we're gonna bring in Expo file system. That's gonna allow us to read the image file and convert it into base64. Then we're gonna send that base64 encoded image as well as the size and dimensions of the image to the server using a server function. So that's one of the two critical pieces here. There's a server function functionality that allows you to really easily create APIs on the backend server that you deploy in tandem with your application. And then those server functions can return RSCs. So let's take a look at our custom hook. The custom hook itself is called use images. It's gonna return a bunch of things, including the current list of images, as well as the on pick image callback function, which allows us to bring up that image picker. And if the customer actually clicks on a picture, we will then read that image into a base64 encoded string. All right, now let's go use this hook. To do that, we're gonna start by bringing in some UI. So a button component, as well as an icon, get a little upload icon. Then down in our function, we use that use images hook and then get back that on pick image. And then inside of our top route view, we'll create a button container that's gonna hold the button and align it in the center. And then we'll define the button at, with an on click to go to that on pick image. And then we'll put in there add image. So let's see how that looks. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's hit add image. And there we go, we got some images. I'll click on this cool dog here. And at this point we'll have read that data into memory, but now we need to go and take that file and basically send it to the server. So to do that, we're gonna create a server function. So I'm gonna create a new directory at the top level. I'll call it actions. And then inside of that, I'll add images.tsx. Now every function in here is going to be a server function. So right at the top, I'll put in use server. And then I'll bring in FS and path. And this is basically how we know that we're on the server because now we have access to the local file system of the server where we're going to go and write the list of images as well as the image that we get from the client. Now let's define what a stored image looks like. It's gonna have the file name as well as the original file name, as well as the width and the height of the image. Now let's define where we're actually gonna put the images. We'll put them in the images JSON file at the top level of our directory. Of course, in reality, you're probably gonna to wanna to connect to a database and store the images in S3. We're just doing a fun demo here. So we're just gonna put them locally. So now let's define our post image server function. So server functions are async functions and they take parameters, in this case, the name of the image as well as the data for the image under the name image and then the width and the height of the image. So we'll start off by wrapping everything in a big try catch block, and then we'll go and get the base64 buffer from the image coming in. Next, we're gonna make sure that the public images directory exists as we're gonna write the images. Now, Expo is actually running two things here. It's running a web server. That's what you deploy to say an EC2 or some other cloud vendor. And then you've got the app and it's the app that's gonna connect with that backend web server and get those images. Next up, we're gonna come up with a random name for the image file. Then we're going to write that image buffer to that file location. Now we need to maintain a list of images. We're going to do that using a JSON file called images.json in the top level directory. I'm just going to start off saying that that images is empty and then we'll go and read it later and make sure that it's up to date. So I'm going to push onto that empty string all of the information that we know about the file. I'm going to write that file to that images JSON and then return success as true. All right, let's hit save. Now let's go wire that up to our UI. So to wire that up to our UI, the first thing we need to do is import that function. So we're gonna import post image from actions images. And then right down here, after we have the image, we're gonna post it. So we just call that server function as if it's any other function, except that it's being run on the server. Super cool. So let's hit save. Let's go back to our simulator. We will add Fred. Now nothing's changed on the UI. That's fine so far. 
But let's go and take a look at what we've got. So we've got images.json now. Awesome. It's got Fred there. That's great. And then over in our public images, we've got Fred. <laughs> How cool is that? You've never seen file uploading that easy. But of course, the customer doesn't see anything in the UI. So let's go and build ourselves another server function that gets us a list of all of the images we've uploaded. So right up here above post image, I'll create another async function called get images that returns a promise to a list of the stored images. All it needs to do is just read that JSON file and then return it. And of course, we want to use that down here. So now we get the current list of images before we add our new images to it and we overwrite the image file with our new image as well as all the old ones. So now to make use of this, we're going to go back into our UI. I'll go and bring in get images. And now inside of our use images, we're going to have a list of the images from the server. So I need to bring in use state. We also need to bring in stored image. And I know this is terrible, but the first time we launch, we want to go and get the list of images. So I'm going to use a use effect for that. So in our use effect, I'll call get images and then set the images to that. And then finally down here, after we've posted an image, I will then call that get images and then set the array to those images. And of course, we want to go and return the images out of here and then I'll bring them in down here. Now, thankfully, we actually have an image list component. So let me just bring that in. So up here at the top of the file, I'll bring an image list. And I think we're ready to go. Okay, let's take a look. And there we go. We can see that we have one image uploaded. Let's now upload one of my dog Murph. Fantastic. Looks really good. And how clean and quick is that? Now, remember how I said this is a two part solution. We have server functions and we also have the return of React server components. And the way that you do that is you have your server functions return components. Let's go check it out. So back in our server functions, we got get images, but what happens if we did get image list and then we return react nodes? How cool is that? So we're just going to get the list of images and then invoke that exact same image list on our images. Really cool. Let's bring in image list. Now back over in our UI, instead of using use state to store the data, the stored image data, instead, we're just going to store the react node. So now I've got our React node stored. We're not going to use stored image anymore, but we are going to do get image list. Replace get images with that. And of course, the same thing down here. Now images remains the same, but of course, we don't want to just invoke image list. All we want to really do is just use images because it is a React node. Is it save? All right, now let's go back over here and we seem to have an issue. Let's go back over to our terminal. And okay, so this is kind of a gotcha. This is all in beta, so it's all very early days. Now the image list uses stylesheet.create. That's a pretty standard React Native thing, but because of the way that it's being bundled, it's looking for this issue where you might have a component dot some other component. Now that's not actually happening right here, but it's being falsely triggered. So the easy fix to this is to go into that images list component and right at the top of that file, use use client. Let's hit save and then reload. And there you go. So we're sending those components all the way from the server to the UI. And just to make sure that we see that actually happening, I'm just going to go and add some views here. So I'll wrap that in a view, which you need to bring in as well as text. And then right at the top here, I'll put in text that says images Hit save and right at the top there in very small font, we can see images so we can actually change the response going onto the client without actually revving the client. And that is absolutely huge. But before we take a look at how to add interactivity to the components that we send from the server, let's take a few seconds to talk about this week's sponsor and that's infinite red. If you want to do cutting edge work like this React Native work here that we're doing with RSCs and you get stuck and need some help, then Infinite Red is the React Native consultancy that you should turn to. I know that when I'm stuck on something, they always know how to fix it, which is really saying something when it comes to React Native. And that's because they've been doing React Native from the start. They are the OG React Native consultancy. Infinite Red works with companies both large and small, companies you've heard of like Mercari, Zoom, Microsoft, 
dominoes, and more. Just read these case studies, like this one from Arcade City, where they played a pivotal role at every step in the development of that application, working through the design system and building it out, and then building the app using novel technologies like crypto and blockchain. And look at how well it turned out. It is awesome. And not only are they doing great work for their customers, they're also an integral part of the React Native community, hosting an awesome podcast called React Native Radio. You should definitely subscribe to that today. And hosting the Chain React Conference right in my hometown, right here of Portland, Oregon. It's a great show, even though I was speaking last year. Listen, I got to be honest with you. These are friends of mine, and they are fantastic. They are wonderful, smart folks who will help bring your app vision to life Check them out today at infinite.red. All right, let's say that I wanna add some interactivity to this. So I wanna be able to click on these images and zoom in and zoom out. So let's go take a look at our image list. And we can see here that we have an image viewer. We just wanna make it so that you can zoom in and zoom out based on a flag. We'll call that is zoomed. So we need to bring in use state. We'll make some changes to some styles. So if we're zoomed in, we'll add zoomed image row. We'll change the style of the image so that when it's zoomed, it's 100% wide and we'll change the container around the text. But of course, to make this interactive, this has to be a touchable opacity. So I'll change that view to a touchable opacity. And then I'll add an on press where we'll toggle when it's zoomed. All right, let's hit save. And now I can click in and click out. Look at that. That is so cool. So we're sending interactive components to the client. And if you think, wow, there's a lot of complexity there. Well, not really. What's actually happening is that there's a manifest and it's shared between the server and the client when they're built. So the client components, in this case, the image viewer component is just referenced by an ID and the server is just sending back an ID to the client, which then uses React to instantiate the image viewer in this case, based on that ID. So that's a really important limitation to understand. You're not gonna be able to send just any random client component out to the client. You actually have to have the client component that you're referencing built on the client. All right, one more thing before we wrap it up. How about if we wanna actually have the entire route, in this case, index, actually server rendered? So let's give that a try. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this all, and I'm gonna go over to our components directory and create a new file called images. Keep that exactly the same. Now I'll go back to our index, and I'll just import that images and run it. All right, doesn't look any different. So now what I wanna do is I wanna go and get the image list, and then I wanna be able to invoke that inside of images, like this. So I'm gonna go and have images, and it's gonna take as child components that React node. So let's go back over here to our images, and right here we'll add children, and then we'll say, if you've got images from the server that would be updated images, then use those, otherwise use children. Now let's hit save. Let's go back over here. Now, the last thing I need to do is wrap this in a suspense. So we'll bring in suspense. So we need to bring that in from React, as well as text from React Native. And then we'll hit save, and let's take a look. Now that's being completely rendered on the server, and we can check that out by going back over to our actions, and we'll add a wait state in there. So add about three seconds of wait, hit refresh, and now we see right up in the upper left-hand corner, loading, and then finally we get our output. So it's actually suspending on that route and doing the entire server render. And you can mix and match this any way you want. If you wanna have multiple suspenses for multiple components, or you wanna have a combination of non-suspended components as well as suspended components, no problem at all. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at React Server Components with React Native. This is amazing stuff. It's only, as far as I know, available in Expo. And of course, brought to you by the Expo team. And of course, this video is brought to you by Infinite Red. Thanks to them again for that. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comment section right down below. Of course, all the codes available for you in the description. Just go there, check it out. And in the meantime, if you like this video, do us a solid, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified the next time a new one of these blue collar coders comes out.